On June 15th, beneath the vast desert sky of Atacama, something extraordinary happened. The Vera Rubin Observatory, funded by an international consortium, activated its next-generation telescope. Armed with an 8.4-meter mirror and a record-breaking 3.2-gigapixel camera, Rubin possesses capabilities that eclipse every astronomical instrument ever constructed. It scans the cosmos faster and penetrates deeper into space than anything before it, capturing celestial objects so faint and swift that other telescopes simply miss them. That very night, Rubin's sensors detected something unprecedented. A pale emerald luminescence emerged from the direction of Sagittarius, tracing a path that matched no known asteroid or comet trajectory. It moved with a velocity impossible for any object native to our solar system. The observatory transmitted the data frames to NASA headquarters for immediate verification. Within hours, the response arrived. Debris, instrumental glitch, nothing significant. But the Rubin team understood their instrument's true capabilities. They maintained their lock on the target. Two weeks passed. On July 1st, NASA's Atlas Telescope in Chile independently detected the identical anomalous streak. This time, they recognized it wasn't from our solar neighborhood. NASA officially designated it an interstellar object, only the third ever discovered after Oumuamua and Borisov, naming it 3I Atlas. The designation honored the Atlas Observatory, but curiously, not the facility that first observed it. To the Rubin team, this felt like erasure of their groundbreaking discovery. Yet, this wasn't their first encounter with institutional dismissal, because in mid-September, Rubin observed something far more unsettling. Its massive mirror and ultra-rapid camera captured nine small bodies traveling alongside 3 i Atlas in what appeared to be escort formation. They materialized in less than 0.01 seconds, faster than a tenth of an eye blink, maintaining precise formation around the primary object. Each one radiated that same mysterious emerald glow. Professor Avi Loeb at Harvard didn't dismiss these findings. He studied the observational data meticulously and voiced what others feared to suggest. The eye, Atlas, isn't merely passing through our solar system. It's functioning as a mothership. The escorts are probe units. And as it penetrates deeper into our solar system, there will be more, many more, Despite NASA's initial skepticism about Rubin's early warnings, the observatory followed Loeb's guidance. Beginning September 21st, the team aimed their 8.4-meter mirror toward the galactic center in Sagittarius, the region where 3 I Atlas had first emerged. They maintained continuous observation for seven full nights. What they documented during that week completely terrified them. Night after night, data flooded in. A cascade of new celestial bodies bleeding out of the darkness surrounding 3 i Atlas, as though some concealed manufacturing facility had commenced operations. The first night, Rubin logged 989 objects emerging from the 3 i Atlas region. By the second night, the count had already surged to 1355. On the sixth night, 1796. By the seventh, 2,143. Three days later, the tally exploded past 4,000. The multiplication continued, all trajectories pointing toward Earth. The swarm didn't burst into existence instantaneously. It expanded in real time, with fresh objects appearing in consecutive scans every few hours, like successive production batches from an automated facility. Why can Rubin detect these objects when other Earth-based telescopes cannot? because no other telescope on our planet is engineered like Rubin. Its enormous 8.4-meter mirror combined with the largest, most sophisticated astronomical camera ever constructed creates a 3.2-gigapixel eye that sweeps across the heavens nightly, capturing vast fields of starlight simultaneously instead of focusing on isolated patches. This is why it could reveal what no one else could— thousands of bodies spilling out of deep space in perfect formation. What made the discovery so profoundly disturbing was the uniformity. Spectral analysis showed every single object shared identical velocity, identical trajectory, and the same strange green-tinted emission as 3I Atlas. 
Loeb confirmed the presence of nickel, cobalt and high-temperature alloys, metals forged under industrial conditions. All exhibited the same unusual carbon monoxide-driven luminescence. Until that moment, every amateur and professional astronomer worldwide had tracked only one object. Now there were thousands. Infrared spectroscopy intensified the concern. Each of these bodies measured approximately one-tenth the size of 3EI Atlas, yet apparently powered by a core twice as energetic. 3EI Atlas had already baffled scientists with an estimated 10-gigawatt power source inferred from its thermal signature. But these new companions appear to radiate 20 gigawatts each. Even our most advanced nuclear reactors cannot achieve that power-to-mass ratio. Our largest power facilities weigh thousands of tons to generate only a few gigawatts. These objects are no larger than a city block, yet each one radiates sufficient energy to illuminate entire nations while hurtling through interstellar space. Astrophysicists at Caltech and MIT attempted to model the phenomenon. Their supercomputers repeatedly crashed. Regardless of how they adjusted the parameters, temperature, pressure, plasma density, the equations refused to converge. You simply cannot contain the necessary fuel or magnetic confinement field into an object that compact without exotic materials or impossibly extreme containment pressures. Achieving this would require technology vastly beyond anything humanity possesses. Meanwhile, the multiplication accelerated. According to Loeb's research team at Harvard, one new object was materializing every 0.1 milliseconds. In observational terms, they simply blinked into existence as though uncloaking or passing through an invisible portal. That manifestation speed explains why no telescope or spacecraft managed to capture the precise instant they appeared. The event unfolds too rapidly for any sensor system we possess to photograph in real time. However, in cosmic terms, these timescales are almost trivial. Gamma-ray bursts can release more energy in mere milliseconds than every star in our galaxy combined. Cosmic rays tear through planetary orbits at nearly light speed. Even the most massive black holes can collide and merge in a thousandth of a second, unleashing gravitational waves that ripple across the cosmos before humanity can even register their existence. But the critical question remains. How is this object multiplying so rapidly? Several competing hypotheses began emerging among the handful of astronomers taking Rubin's data seriously. The most grounded started with Loeb's mothership hypothesis, self-replicating aggregates, essentially a mechanism by which the primary body functions as a factory, constructing new units from whatever material it harvests along its trajectory. If the core conceals an advanced fusion or antimatter reactor, it could channel that power into precision plasma jets that separate preformed sections of its own hull. In this scenario, 3I Atlas would harvest dust, plasma, and metallic particles from interstellar space, converting them into finished craft and ejecting them into the solar system as autonomous probes. The emission tail in this interpretation isn't sublimated ice, but high-temperature exhaust from reactors and plasma forges operating at industrial scale. This interpretation gained substantial credibility after Loeb, Richard Katz, and Petery. Verish released data from an unprecedented observing campaign between May 15 and September 23, 2025. 4,222 measurements from 227 observatories worldwide. Night by Night The measurements revealed 3I Atlas growing heavier and more anomalous. Initially estimated at approximately 10 billion tons in May, by late September its mass had surged past 33 billion tons, and its nucleus had expanded beyond 5 kilometers across. To Loeb's team, that magnitude of mass accumulation is consistent with a machine actively gathering and refining raw material, not a passive comet drifting through space. It also explains why every new object Rubin detects shares identical speed composition, and distinctive exhaust signature, launched in coordinated patterns. This hypothesis also accounts for the tail color transformation from red to green. Initially, NASA reported it displayed the normal yellow-red glow of a dusty ice comet. But two months later, the tail had shifted to brilliant green. 
Loeb's team interpreted this not as a simple color change, but as clear evidence that the object's concealed power source had shifted operational modes, ramping to full capacity so it could harvest raw material and assemble probes at industrial scale. The elevated engine output explains the green emission, hotter plasma excites metals and oxygen to radiate green light, and the reverse tail direction suggests thrust vectors dominating over solar radiation pressure. In this scenario, the probes may be designed to approach planetary bodies while the main structure remains at a safer distance. In the worst case, Loeb warned, these could be autonomous drones mapping our solar system or extracting valuable resources from Earth. Professor Michio Kaku attempted to explain the 3 i Atlas swarm through more conventional mechanisms. Spectroscopy from Gemini South Observatory in Chile revealed that 3 i Atlas doesn't vent gas randomly. In interviews, he suggested that a violent collision, perhaps with an unseen asteroid or a dense pocket of interstellar debris, could have struck the object head-on fracturing it open and releasing a hidden reservoir of volatile ices and metal-rich dust. In his interpretation, the impact would have scattered thousands of fragments outward simultaneously. Because the impactor traveled along nearly the same trajectory as 3EA Atlas, the fragments could inherit almost precisely the same velocity and direction as the parent body. To terrestrial observers, it would appear like a coordinated fleet moving. Together, when in reality it would be a massive natural breakup event triggered by a single collision. But Rubin's own data systematically undermined that explanation. If a singular collision caused the release, every fragment should have materialized simultaneously and been visible in one scan. Instead, across consecutive nights, the number of detected objects climbed steadily from hundreds to over a thousand, then into the thousands. The swarm didn't explode into being like debris from an impact. It expanded in real time with new objects appearing in the data every few hours, resembling fresh production cycles from a manufacturing facility. Loeb's team emphasized that this gradual, stepwise increase contradicts any simple collision scenario. Nothing about the velocity distribution, spectral signatures, or formation geometry matched a debris cloud expanding from a single impact. In one interview, he stated, One thing is certain. These probes are not random. They appeared only after entering the inner solar system. Their power cores are denser and hotter than the main craft. They may be designed to approach worlds while the main body maintains a safer distance. In the worst case, these could be autonomous drones mapping our system or extracting something valuable from our solar system. Despite the mounting evidence and growing public fascination, NASA and ESA have maintained near-complete silence, issuing only brief statements about ongoing observations and repeating that there is no evidence of any threat, even as global tension escalates. But inside the Pentagon and European Space Command, emergency briefings have commenced. Leaked documents reveal contingency plans ranging from interception missions to planetary defense scenarios. China's National Space Administration has reportedly repurposed its heavy-lift Long March 9 program to design a high-velocity interceptor. The European Space Agency is reviving blueprints from its defunct Don Quixote asteroid deflection mission. Even private aerospace companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin have been approached about rapid deployment launch platforms for reconnaissance probes. Despite public excitement, official agencies remain guarded. NASA has refused to release raw James Webb spectroscopic data, citing verification protocols. ESA declined comment on ongoing planetary defense activities. Even the White House issued only a single-sentence response. We are aware of the situation and monitoring it closely. This silence feeds widespread speculation. If the evidence is this compelling, why isn't the world preparing openly? Some insiders whisper about silent mobilization, spacecraft being quietly retasked, defense satellites brought online, radio telescopes moved to elevated alert status. So, what's the truth? Is 3I Atlas truly a natural interstellar comet behaving in ways we've never witnessed before? Or a vast machine assembling a fleet right under our watch? Share your theories below 
and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next development in this unfolding cosmic mystery that could redefine humanity's place in the universe.